Hey everyone, it's your pal Josh, and for this week's Select, I've chosen our 2016 episode on motion sickness, one of the worst non-injurious, non-life-threatening things that can happen to you. But don't worry, you won't get motion sick just from listening, and maybe knowing a little more about it might help you avoid it. We can only hope. Enjoy! Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Joshua Clark. There's Charles W. Chuck Bryant and Jerry's over there. I'm speaking in a monotone, kind of. Hey, dude. Uh, hey. How's it going? It's going well. I'm uh, not motion sick, so things are fine. Do you get motion sick? Sometimes. I mean, if the conditions are right. I was really surprised to find... That not everybody gets motion sick. What are your conditions? Um, poor ventilation and like lots of movement. Um, Back seat of a car. Okay. Uh, but it, anytime I I read in a car. Yeah. Even like glancing at my phone on a map. Really. It, if I have to read mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. It gets me very quick. So I've just learned yeah. that like I can't do it. Yeah. I cannot do it. So I don't. I get it a little bit too. I used to get it more, I think, when I was younger. Supposedly it's normal. Supposedly it is. But I remember a very specific story that my brother still laughs at. And by the way, boy, I'm glad I said that. I owe my brother, my big brother, a big apology because I saw him over the weekend and he said, oh, by the way, I was listening to an old episode and you said you'd never been a groom's, a, uh, a best man. I was the best man at my brother's wedding. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Man, I felt like a jerk. Man, Scott, I'm sorry. I know. And what happened was when I said I hadn't, I just like quickly scanned through my friends that have gotten married, and I didn't think about my brother, and I was his best man. Boy. I know, man. What a jerk. Well, it's it's rectified now. Well, I told them. I was like, you're going to get a public apology. So there it is. That was pretty public. Yeah. As public as it gets. Well, um, you could have also started a Squarespace website if you wanted to. It would have <laughs> been true. really easy. I might do that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there's this old story when we went to Disney. Uh, geez, which is the one where Body Wars is at? Mm. I should have asked Holly from Stuff You Missed in History class. She would know. She probably senses that someone's talking about Disney right now. <laughs> Body Wars either was or still is. I don't know if it's still there. One of those uh, rides that you sit in a, you know, it was one of those first sort of virtual uh, things where they show you a movie and then they move the car. Like the Amazing Voyage or something, wasn't it? Yeah, you went inside a human body and right. were traveling around. I, I want to say Disney World, but I can't remember. Um, so I went in that and... I'm, wait, I'm guess, you grew up in Atlanta. I'm guessing you, you went to Disney World. Well, it definitely was at Disneyland, but I don't know if it was Epcot oh, or I see. Universal Studios I got or Disney World. It was in Orlando. So from what I understand, we have a buddy who works for Disney, yeah. and he set me straight on this before, and I think I've got it. So w- Disney World is all of those. The Magic Kingdom is what you're specifying. So Disney World includes Epcot and Universal Studios. If I'm not mistaken. I really hope I'm not mistaken. And the Magic Kingdom is specifically uh, the one with the castle. Right. If I did get that wrong, Brandon, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one with the castle and all the weird adults that think they're children. <laughs> right. Like Holly from Stuff You Missed in History Class. Uh, so Body Wars anyway. You're tra- traveling through the body. And I remember at one point I was like, man, it's, it's getting hot in here. And Scott was like, this is great. And I was like, I'm not feeling so good, man. Oh, no. It's like, do they have the heat going? He's like, what are you talking about? It feels great. And I got, I didn't vomit, but I got really sick and made it through the ride and left. And he still teases me to this day. He was like, it was temperature, air controlled. Yeah. And you thought it was like 90 degrees and they were like pumping in heat. It's funny. Like it, it got to you like that, like your own body. Cold sweats, the whole wow. deal. Yeah, that's bad. But generally... And you, you actually did puke. No, 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 I did not puke. Oh, you didn't. But generally, I don't... Like, it takes a certain thing, like a really hardcore roller coaster <laughs> right. going in fast, fast circles. Yeah. But I don't get sick on planes or the one cruise I went on, I didn't get sick. Yeah. You know? I've gotten, I've gotten sick before, like, on vacation, but... And on planes. 
it, it's usually fairly fleeting. It's when I introduce reading that it's like right. you're in big trouble for a long time. You can read on a plane, though. I can, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's reading in a car. I just got to stay away from that. But usually it does come about with, like, poor ventilation, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, which is another trigger. It's a big one, or, like, a, a rough odor or something like that. I'm sure all those things don't help. The thing is, is for, for as much as, like, we kind of commonly understand motion sickness, the, the science really doesn't have a full explanation for it. I'm picturing little Josh, because riding backwards is bad, in, like, a rumble seat in a station wagon. In a in a Subaru Brat. With, like, your dad has, like, salami socks on or something <laughs> that stink. What? Like, the windows are rolled up. I don't know. I was just trying to think of something gross smelling. Salami socks? Like, you know, socks made of salami? Sure. Like, wouldn't that smell gross? <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing the skin of another person. Well, no, I was thinking socks salami so- smelled like old salami, but made of salami is even better. Right. I think I'm just picturing you back there, like, reading going, your uh, Mad Magazine, feeling bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do remember being a kid and figuring out I can't read in cars. There was a period where I could, which is kind of surprising because when you're younger, you're more susceptible to motion sickness. Yeah. But I could read in the car while I was younger. And then probably around the time of puberty, I was like, can't do this anymore. So you went opposite. Yep. Weird. Yeah. Well, maybe you developed your hips. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because that's a tease. We'll just leave that out there. All right, so 25 to 40% of people supposedly are uh, susceptible to motion sickness. So weird. Uh, And it can happen on planes. It can happen. It's weird. This one University of Maryland site I went to said, uh, the following are the most common risk factors, riding in a car, boat, airplane, or space shuttle. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Nerds? Just like, they didn't even put amusement park ride. (laughs) They right. just went straight to space shuttle. You know, one that I hadn't seen before, but apparently is a thing, is um, looking through a microscope. Yeah, I hadn't. That makes a little bit of sense, though. Yeah, because the slag can move, and your eyes are seeing movement, yeah. but you're not moving. Uh huh. And yeah, it'll get to you. Uh, That's like another you... nerdy motion sickness: space shuttles and microscopes. <laughs> uh, so, like you said, age between two and twelve, you're more likely, uh, and then you're also more likely to grow out of it after puberty. And one of the reasons that uh, Mm -hmm. women are more motion sickness than men or get motion sickness more than men Mm -hmm. is because one of the theories is that uh, after puberty, they develop more in the hips. Men develop more in the chest. Mm -hmm. And I guess that makes a difference. They didn't really explain why, though, did they? Well, it all has to do with sway theory, which we'll talk about. Oh, that's right. Right. Sway theory. Yeah. But it is true that, like, women are more susceptible, just on average, to motion sickness than men are. Yeah, I saw and some appara- studies. Uh, apparently also Asian women. Are well, the, Asian like, period. Yeah. Because uh, Penn State did a study, and they put people in situations that make them motion sick or not. Mm. Did you look into those? Oh, is it like a tilt-a-whirl? Dude, like, if you went in for just a clinical study, like, I'm going to make some scratch, and right. maybe they'll give me a cool drug or something, Yeah, and it turns out to be a motion sickness study, yeah. you should leave. No, I totally would. So there's this thing called a... Um, Optokinetic drum, I believe, is what it's called. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, optokinetic drum. I it's couldn't like, handle that. It's like um, a, a drum, like a big drum that yeah. you sit inside of, and it's got uh, vertical black and white painted stripes, and it spins around you. Crazy. And the motion, the movement is really emphasized, and like it's designed to make anybody motion sick, and that's how they induce motion sickness. And I saw another one um, where they use a chair that just kind of moves you around whether you like it or not, and it induces motion sickness. Like, what a terrible Torture thing machines. to have happen to you. Man, there was a ride at Six Flags Over Georgia growing up that they got rid of because someone got hurt, supposedly, where it's this barrel that you all get in, you stand, it's like kind of mm. below ground, you stand against the wall. I love those. And it spins so fast, yeah. then they drop the floor beneath you, Yeah. and the centrifugal force holds you against the wall. It's like a spin cycle in a washing machine. You mean I were just talking about that oh, the other that day. That thing was awful. That was my favorite of all time. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, man. I just thought it was so cool. Well, the old story was that someone's leg got trapped when the floor came back up. But I remember hearing that. Now too. that I look back, I'm sure that was an old wives' tale. Although, I was on Snopes the other day, and I was reading an early article, and they were talking about um, you know, the urban legend about some girl who got scalped because her hair got caught in an amusement park riot or something. Yeah. It actually happened. Really? Yeah. 
the wow. girl's ponytail got caught in there and just got pulled right off of her head. Oh, man. I know, but it actually did happen. So it's possible someone's leg yeah. got, got sucked into the tilt-a-whirl. Well, but then what happens is it happened to every amusement park. You right, know, right. It just and it like, happened to my cousin's friend. Right. <laughs> All right, so the Penn State study, uh, they put people in these torture machines, and interestingly, they did confirm 80% of uh, Asian people uh, got sick when it was less than 50% for uh, Caucasian and non-Caucasian. Which is, is that really, crazy? it's very crazy, um, but it, it kind of underscores a growing awareness uh, among motion sickness researchers, aka the, the evil ones, mm-hmm. um, that genetics play a big role in susceptibility to motion sickness. Well, yeah, because there were another couple of findings that lend to that. Um, twins, they studied 200 sets of identical twins, and 100% of the identical twins were both affected. Really? Um, yeah, and some of that, you know, they can't prove that it's genetics because it also could be the uh, uh, just the where they were raised and how they were raised. What's that called? Uh, nurture. Mm. Environment. Environment. Environmental. Um, and if parents are both susceptible to motion sickness, they found that their children are five times more likely. So it sort of points to genetics, but then other things point away from genetics like why why would you know two people in the same family in the same conditions not get sick or why did why, why did two people period not get sick right under the same conditions yeah like i guess what i'm saying same is, salami sock smell yeah yeah same backwards facing seat yeah I, I guess what i'm saying is they haven't figured it out no, they haven't. But if we do figure out that it's genetic, thanks to the magic of the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing process, yes. we'll be able to knock that right out for you. What else? Pregnant? Yeah, p- pregnant women are more susceptible to it. Um, women uh, who are menstruating, I think, also are. And people who get migraines yeah. are more susceptible. And then people who sleep poorly are more susceptible to um, uh, motion sickness. Yeah, it says if you're prone to nausea or vomiting, but I don't know if that's like that's sort of a chicken or the egg thing. Yeah. If so you ask me. we'll uh, we're gonna get into again. We said science doesn't understand exactly what's going on here, but there's some good theories, and we're gonna talk about them right after. So, uh, Chuck. Yeah. Let's talk about some theories for motion sickness because... There's kind of two. Yeah. I saw, I think it was this Atlantic article you sent. That was good, actually. It's it's not so much, um, it's not so much science, it's a debate. Yeah. Over, you know, the likelier explanation. But they actually kind of fit together. I think so. Yeah. But if you ask the people, apparently, the author in the Atlantic, uh... It's called The Mysterious Science of Motion Sickness. Mm -hmm. He sort of pokes fun a little bit. He's like, to me, they sound sort of the same, but don't tell that to those people who believe one or the other because they're like, no, they're nothing like each other. Yeah. She, Julie Beck. Oh, is that who it was? Mm -hmm. All right. Nice job, Julie. Good article. Um, (laughs) Pat on the back for you. (laughs) Gold star. So uh, here's the first one is, and this one, they both make a lot of sense to me. Um, Basically, there's a, a dissonance between the parts of your body that sense motion. Right. That's the easiest way to say it. It's called the sensory conflict theory. Yeah. So you got your eyeballs. Yeah. It, it senses motion. It's a, it's weird if you think about your eyes doing that, but that's one of the roles that they play well, in yeah, your body. Well, yeah, you see motion. Right. Sure. Uh, you also have the vestibular system, which is centered around your inner ear. Yep. And that definitely senses motion, movement, acceleration, gravity. Yeah. Uh, and then Big you one. you have all the sensor the sensors in like your muscles and joints and stuff, right? Yeah, I didn't really think about that as being one, but for sure, yeah, like your body actually feels it. Yeah, uh, well, think about moving. it. Like if you if you feel yourself kind of f- moving backward, you're definitely sensing it through your inner ear, but you can also feel it in your feet as well, and yeah. they're sending a a. a, a bulletin to your brain saying lean forward dummy you're gonna fall back yeah. what's your problem friend yeah 
That's what it says. So this dissonance occurs when basically, like, let's say you're sitting in a movie theater, like an IMAX, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a scene where you're you're flying with Superman or something. Like, you're seeing this with your eyeballs, right. like a first-person perspective shot of flight. Right. But you're sitting in your seat, so your eyes are saying, you're flying, mm -hmm. and your butt's going, you're sitting here. And your brain's like a witch. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Witchcraft. Uh, so it creates this, this, it creates motion sickness. That's when the, uh, nausea might kick in, dizziness, uh, those cold sweats, salivation. I like how the, um, the author of the How Stuff Works article pointed out, she specifically mentioned Avatar. Yeah. Who is the dude, um, the, the guy who is like the friend on the flight of the Concords? Mary? No. The, the other dude, the, the guy who worked in the pawn oh, shop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, what is his name? It's not Arj oh, Barker, is it? Arj Barker, yeah. yes, it was. I always want to call him Boz Lerman. I know it's definitely yeah. not the same dude. Great comedian. Arj Barker, you mean I went to go see him. He did some stand-up, right? And he was talking yeah. about Avatar. And he said when it first came up, we were like, oh, Avatar, have you seen Avatar? Yeah, it's yeah. really great. And then, like, everything you heard was, have you seen Avatar? you got to see Avatar. He said, like, after a couple of weeks, you'd just be walking down the sidewalk, and people would pull up alongside you in their car and roll down the window and go, Avatar! <laughs> and this is, I think, a great example of that. Well, it's interesting. I posted an article on Facebook not too long ago on the Stuff You Should Know page about this person wrote an article about Avatar, and their argument was that it, for such a huge movie, it had, like, zero cultural impact. Hmm. Like, it was big at the time, right. but does anyone care now? Like, it's not like the Star Wars world or oh, Star yeah. Trek or all these things. And I, I totally agreed. I saw Avatar once, and I was like, I'm done with it. Typical James Cameron. Schlock. I've seen it zero times. No, it sucks. <laughs> but, dude, there are Avatar people, though. I know. That piled on and were like, what is this guy? No idea what he's talking about. It's totally relevant. Oh, like, I'm sure they're going to be all over our Facebook page after this episode comes out. I hate Chuck forever now. I like some of James Cameron's stuff, but if he wrote the script, then it's... I'm not going to like it too No, much. I know what you mean. I think he's a hack writer. Yeah. <laughs> Did I just say that to hundreds of thousands of people? Yeah, and I'm sure James Cameron cares what you think. He's at the bottom of the Mariana <laughs> Trench right now. <laughs> He's not listening to stuff you should He's know. picking out my future burial site. So, um, Chuck, we were talking about the sensory conflict theory, right? Yes. That's one big explanation. And it definitely kind of makes sense, right? You, your brain just basically gets overloaded and is like, oh, I need to sit down. I've got the vapors, right? Yeah. I'm doing a lot of bad impressions in this episode. Who's that noticed? supposed to be? Uh, somebody fainting in the late 19th century. Oh, no, it's great. So it was your Arch Barker. A fop. That's what it was. It was a fop. A dandy fop? Mm-hmm. There's another competing idea, and that is um, we kind of talked about. Um, it's called sway theory. Yeah, and there's a dude, uh, Thomas uh, Stoffergen. Or Stoffergen. I'm going with the gin. With gin? J. Stoffergen. Uh, University, like of <laughs> University of Minnesota professor of kinesiology. <laughs> and listen to this. He's the director of its Affordance Perception Action Laboratory. Nerd. He gets uh, motion sickness looking through microscopes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so he proposes the sway theory, um, which basically... It has nothing to do with the vestibular system. He said he says that I don't. I don't necessarily agree with that, but okay. Agree that he thinks that. No, I know that he thinks that. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with that. His take on that. Agree. I think it's still tied together. But his theory is, and this first part isn't a theory. It's true. Is that everyone sways, like unless you're one of those uh, people that stand uh, like uh, motionless in the middle of New Orleans for money. Mm, mm, yeah, or the Statue paint of Liberty, silver, or something like that. Yeah, they're uh -huh. good. They're good at it. But if you're just a regular dope like you and I, when we stand there, we're going to be moving in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you be swaying a little bit. It's weird. Like it, uh, if you stop and like really pay attention to it. Yeah, you you notice it, but you'll never notice it unless you are focused on it. Yeah, you're always moving a little bit. Yeah, swaying. If you're standing up, you're swaying for the most part. Yes, and the point he makes is if everyone truly relaxed every muscle in their body, they'd fall over. Right. So the whole point, the whole thing of swaying is it's the byproduct of us standing upright, which is not something we've been doing for all of the time we've been on Earth because we evolved from things that 
walked on four legs. Standing up's kind of new. Well, sure, and babies don't stand up. Right, They exactly. have to learn as well. Yeah, exactly. So um, Stoffergen's whole idea is that motion sickness comes about when you have, um, when you're exposed to movement that contradicts the natural um, swaying that you've learned to do to stand upright. Right. And it undermines it, and your brain goes... Which makes sense in a way, because let's say you're on a boat, Mm -hmm. and the boat's tilting to the left, and so what your feet do, or, you know, they account for that, and maybe you lean in on the inside of your foot, and your toes flex. Right. So Because you want to make yourself more upright again. And then the boat turns again in a direction you're not expecting. You're correcting for that first move. The second move happens... And your body doesn't know what to do. So here's the thing. The, the sensory conflict one makes a little more sense to me than this one. Because that sounds to me like if that, if that were the case, if that's what's going on, and it clearly is, like when, it's, when you get your sea legs or whatever, yeah. um, you, you, you are moving along, you're trying to stay standing under these weird conditions. Right. Why would that translate into something like dizziness or nausea or vomiting? Or cold sweats. That doesn't make sense to me. Sensory yeah. conflict, I can see translating into it. But even beyond that, a lot of people are like, no, that doesn't, still it doesn't make sense why you would vomit. And this one guy named um, Michael Treisman in 1977 came up with a pretty awesome explanation yeah. for why we should get nauseated when we get motion sick, right? Well, yeah. Should we take a break and talk about that? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right, Josh, Michael Treisman, 1977, in the journal Science, right. what, what did he say? Oh, he said that we get nauseated from motion sickness because over there are some toxins out there that can mess with our vestibular system, right? Yes. So the body is tricked into thinking that it's possibly been exposed to some sort of toxin because the vestibular the vestibular system is out of whack from motion sickness. So it gets nauseated and ultimately might vomit as a, a reflex to get rid of whatever toxin it thinks has been ingested. Yeah. It's basically a case of mistaken identity. I think it, it explains it perfectly. Yeah. It makes sense to me. I could see it a little bit. Yeah. I think what, um, what Stafrogen is saying is that you're – you're used to regaining your balance. You spend your entire life learning this system. Right. And that if it's thrown off, he, what he doesn't do is connect it. I believe, I, I believe you're right. He doesn't connect it in the end to like something that happens in your brain. Right. The, the, why the physiological reaction? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. But he does have some pretty good evidence backing his idea of sway theory up though. Um, so again, women are more susceptible to, um, to uh, motion sickness than men, right? Yes, that's what they say. Well, he says, aha, well, sway theory explains this. Um, Kids are equally susceptible to, both genders are equally susceptible to motion sickness before puberty. Right. But then after puberty, the bodies change. Mm -hmm. And where um, women and men hold most of their weight is different, right? Women hold it mostly around their hips. Men hold it more around their chest. And that means that the center of gravity is different, which means the amount that we sway is different, right? Yeah, I think, uh, what, who does he say sways? Women sway farther? But slower. But slower. Men, men sway faster, but within a tighter area. Right. And, and, and these are micro sways. Yeah, I mean, I think that av- the, like, most people move no more than like an inch to any given side. Yeah. And even then, you're like Barney on The Simpsons when he walked out for that like bachelor um, auction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then there's also land sickness, which is interesting. Yeah. I didn't look too much into it, but I have heard of it, which is basically the concept that if you're a, a sailor, right, then you've gotten or you know just somebody who's been on boats enough, sure. you, you don't have to be a professional. Um, <laughs> you get your sea legs so well that you get. Land sickness. Yeah, when, when you, you get, get back. Yeah, and you're on solid ground, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Right, because your brain's so used to things moving 
that it perceives that it's moving even though it's not. Do you want to say the French name for it? Mal de Barquemont. Close. Let me, let me look. I wasn't even looking. That was out you of You forgot the, the middle part. Well, then you say it. There's a Q-U-E in the middle, so maybe Mal de Barquemont. I said Mal de Barquemont. Mal de Barquemont. Barquemont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bar- barbecuemont. I love that when we do this stuff, there's, it's probably literally 50% people laughing and 50% people want to kill us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot of people want to kill us. I can live with that. As long as they never do. All right. So um, should we go over some, uh, some things that you can do to yeah, prevent it? Because, I mean, that, that whole segment on what explains motion sickness kind of petered out, but that's the state of science right now. Yeah, although they, I will say they have looked at the uh, 23andMe um, for the genetic side and have found some support for both claims. I think that they're together. I do too. Like I think if, if yes, your, your swaying system is set up in a certain way, and why can't that be a component that along with the vestibular system and your sight and all that um, is affected by... And creates motion sickness. I I just don't understand why it has to be one or the other. That was the impression that I had he was trying to really come get across was that it's no, it's its own thing. Yeah, yeah. I just think that's weird. So what do you what do you go to if you get motion sick? Well, they say to keep your eyes on the horizon, whether you're in a car or a boat or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, that that'll help. Cuts down on uh, motion, right? Or the sensation of motion? I'm not sure. I think so, because think about it. When you look at stuff that's close to the car, mm-hmm. it's blurring by. Oh, it's going so fast. Sense. The horizon's staying yeah, you know, yeah. constant. Look at you. Um, keep your head still so you can lay down if you're able to somewhere. Um, or at least put your head back against the seat. Yeah. Just sort of keep it as still as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't smoke. Sure. They say that's f- just good advice all around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um if you're going to fly, they say to avoid big greasy meals and alcohol the night before and eat light meals or snacks, low in calories, uh, the day of. But, yeah, you do want to have something in your stomach, though, because that's just going to yeah. help. Empty stomach, no good. Right. Uh, turn that air vent, whether you're in your car or a plane or a boat, you need, want some fresh air blowing on your face, mm-hmm. ideally, or at least recycled air. Uh, I haven't felt this bad since that Anita Bryant concert. <laughs> Uh, sit in the front of the airplane or over a wing, supposedly. Yeah, the rear of the airplane. Can you tell the difference? Oh, man. Really? You just get whipped around back and forth. It's way worse. If you get motion sick, you should never sit behind the the, um, wings of the airplane. See, I love the last car of a roller coaster, though. Well, yeah, you're feeling it more. Yeah. You're enjoying it more. You don't (laughs) get motion sick. Um, What else? Avoid salty foods. Uh, before you travel there's also remedies too right so the jury's out on whether ginger actually helps or not or if it's just a placebo effect ginger peppermint and black whorehound Uh apparently are some of the herbs that may or may not work who knows um i can tell you firsthand and i looked it up c bands acupressure bracelets yeah that go on your wrist three fingers width down from the heel of your palm. The pericardium six so is the acupuncture point. I saw research that showed that um, neither placebo nor the acupressure bands had any effect on motion sickness. I can tell you that even if it is just placebo, they still work. Oh, yeah? They, firsthand, they work. All right. Even if it's placebo, I don't care. That's fine. I got as a C-band. As long as it keeps me from being motion sick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It kept me and you, me, from being motion sick on an entire cruise. But would you have been motion sick <clears throat> yes. without it? Yeah, because we had we didn't use it for one day, and we felt oh, okay. it immediately. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I brought one on my only cruise that I went to, and uh, I don't think I wore it because I didn't need to. We had like divots on our wrist because really? we just had them on like the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you should like bring it, it just in case. Yeah, sure. We also had scopolamine. Yeah. And we didn't even use it because the C-bands work so well. Dramamine, is that the same thing or is no. that different? Scopolamine is that stuff that like they um, drug people with and then uh, it's like, remember in our truth serum episode, we talked about scopolamine. Oh yeah. It's like a, a drug in South America where they'll, they'll dose you with it and then you end up like just basically becoming zombified and don't remember anything. Yeah. 
It's the same stuff, huh. but it dulls the um, messages from your inner ear to your brain, so Sweet. your sensation of motion is decreased. Nice. Uh, homeopathy. There haven't been a ton of studies about the effect, uh, effectiveness of specific remedies, but uh, they do say things like borax, cocculus, uh, petroleum, sepia, tabacum. Dude. So we're going to hear from so many people just for having even uttered the word homeopathy. Is that how you say it? Homeopathy? No, it goes both ways. Okay. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, man, nothing drives people more crazy than that. I know. They're going to go berserk. Mark my words. Because it's not, you know, well. Well, I said that it that take it or leave it, basically. Yeah. yeah. Some people swear by it. Yeah. I mean. Some people think it's. Uh, it to, from what I have ever seen, it's like the biggest flashpoint, uh, like of anything yeah. of anything that skeptics talk about. Mm-hmm. Nothing drives them crazier than than homeopathy. Yeah, yeah. Like makes them nuts. It's kind of funny to watch. It does because then you people say you shouldn't even say Western versus Eastern medicine. You should say proven science versus like witchcraft. Uh, who uh, did the people say that on Facebook? Yeah, they get really like you shouldn't even say Western. Don't even medicine. say it. I said you can't say it. <laughs> Don't even say it, Josh. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm making fun of you. <laughs> Mind-body medicine, uh, biofeedback training and relaxation. They did a study of 55 pilots um, who had to stop flying due to motion sickness, which, by the way, I didn't know that, like, that f- frightens me just knowing that. That a pilot can get motion yeah. sick? Yeah. But think about it for the pilot. It's like career ending. Oh, I'm sure. You know? Um, 76% of them got over their motion sickness and were able to return to work after biofeedback training and relaxation programs. So basically they sit in that tilt-a-whirl, bring it on, and then biofeedback instruments record uh, temperature, muscle Mm -hmm. tension, and they use relaxation techniques uh, and mental imagery in the chair Mm -hmm. and over time. It's sort of like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is another thing that they use. Uh, which is like, you know, get in the chair right. and do it until <laughs> right. it doesn't affect you Exposure any longer. Exposure therapy, right? Yeah. Um, there's this guy named Sam Puma, who's a physician and uh, aeronautics engineer, I think, maybe. At the very least, he's worked in the aerospace industry for a really long time. And he has come up with some habituation exercises where basically you kind of mildly expose your body to the kind of movements it's going to expect on like a space shuttle or whatever uh-huh. ahead of your trip. And you can, he says you can be prepared and not have any motion sickness in as, as little as a week. Huh. Yeah. And I, I guess it checks out. Yeah, because uh, it sounds like, you know, come on, what's this guy selling me? Right. But then the Atlantic author, she yeah. said, you know, no, apparently it's a, a real thing. Yeah. Uh, and then another good tip that I saw was uh, if you're in a car and you're not driving, pretend like you're driving. You might feel silly, but, you know, pretend like you're driving. Maybe even do your hands and anticipate the curbs and things. <laughs> yeah. Maybe give them a little horn, a little imaginary horn <laughs> once in sure. a while. Uh, yeah, the, the reason why the best seat in a car is the driver is because you can anticipate the movements the car is going to make. Yeah. Which supports sway theory if you think about it. True. Because you can counteract it. Do you ever have one of those passengers in your car that hits the fake brake mm-hmm. because they're nervous? Sure. It's like a, just an involuntary reaction. You see them stomp their foot on the floorboard. Right. It's pretty funny. I have one friend in particular that does that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I guess that's it, right? I got nothing else. Um, if you want to learn more about motion sickness, you can type those words in the search bar at HowStuffWorks.com. And since I said search bar, it's time for listener mail. Uh, I'm going to call this, uh, Bonsai Tutu. Hey guys, love the show. I'm a tutu maker. Who knew? (laughs) Okay. But you know, somebody makes them. Sure. They don't just grow on trees. Not anymore. Uh, I'm a tutu maker and work alone in my studio a lot, making tutus. You guys are my company, and thank you for that. I also have a Bachelor of Science in Ornamental Horticulture. So listening to the uh, bonsai episode reminded me of an experience I had with a bonsai master in a class I had in college. Uh, The professor covered the art of bonsai leading up to this man's visit. He covered the art 
meticulous decisions made in the shaping of the tree, etc. The day came when the master was there to speak with us. We came into class and all of his amazing work was displayed around the classroom. It was really beautiful. Everyone sort of spoke about it in hushed tones, very reverent to each other. Finally, the master, who was a rather tiny Japanese man, was ready to demonstrate the technique for us. He unpotted the plant in front of him, spoke about the shape and what he felt would be the best way to train it. And after this, he pulled out a club the size of a baseball bat and beat the crap out of the root ball, explaining the need to control the plant. And no one knew exactly <laughs> who's boss? how to react. I had not thought about that for a really long time, and I listened to the show chuckling the whole time because of it. Uh, I thought you might appreciate the story. That is from Nancy Gallagher, the tutu maker. Well, thanks a lot, Nancy. Uh, uh, maybe he was just trying to get the dirt away from the roots. I don't know. Or maybe it was he a... He was just messing with them. A bad bonsai. <laughs> Mr. Miyagi would never do that. No. I worked with Pat Morita. Did I mention that on the show? No. Was it... He did a music video uh, that I worked on. For... A Karate Kid spoof. Oh, oh yeah. Alien Ant Farm. Uh-huh. And uh, I worked with him, and he was super nice. And it was just a couple years before he died. He's dead? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, he liked the white wine. Oh, yeah. I think you've told me this story before. It sounds yeah. familiar. I had to go fetch him some Chardonnay at, like, noon. <laughs> <laughs> I was it's like, so you know what? If I was Pat Morita on the set of a music video... Sure, I'd be like... I'd have a PA fetch me some Chardonnay, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remember he played Al, the replacement Al? Arnold. On ha- Happy Days? Arnold. Yeah. Al was the name of the actor. Yeah. Right? He's from California. Pat Morita. What does that have to do with it? Nothing. Oh, that was an additional fact? Yeah, I just I mean, some people might see the Karate Kid and only know that and think he's from Japan. Right. But he was putting on that accent. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a California dude. Totally. Yeah. Like, laid back, kind of. Oh, yeah. Chardonnay guy. Uh, if you want to know more about Pat Morita or get in touch with us or whatever, you can send off for more info to SYSK Podcast on Twitter or on Instagram. You can uh, join us on Facebook.com slash Stuff You Should Know. You can send us an email to StuffPodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. And as always, join us at our home on the web, StuffYouShouldKnow.com. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.